Let there be music, Dr. Fizz with the back door to quantum mechanics. There is one case here we can find in classical physics where there's quantization and that brings us to the harmonics. If you have a string here with length L, it can vibrate in the fundamental mode or the first harmonic up and down, or you can pull one side up and one side down and let it go. And you have the second harmonic, the third and fourth harmonic, and there's nothing in between. These are quantized states. In other words, this is considered like the first energy level, the second energy level, the third energy level, the fourth one. And how do we do the quantization for the wavelength? Well, we go to a fitting room and we say there's one half wavelength here, there's two halves there, there's three halves there, four halves here, and they're all fitted to L. So N half ways fitted to L quantizes the wavelength as 2L over N. And that in turn quantizes the momentum using de Broglie's relation. And this then applies to, well, what else could it be? A particle here is bouncing back and forth between two brick walls. So there's a particle momentum P bouncing between two uh, brick walls where the momentum is quantized via the wavelength. Well, the momentum is mv, and the energy is 1 half mv squared. It's all kinetic energy. So we multiply top and bottom here by m, so we can see the p squared over 2m. A nice formula to remember for the kinetic energy. This one here, 1 half mv squared, and p squared over 2m. Here's our summary of things that, that we're doing, but the wavelength is 2L over n, the quantization of the wavelength. 1 over lambda, getting prepared for the de Broglie relation substitution and the de Broglie relation and the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy equals p squared over 2n, which is h squared over lambda squared for the p squared. And we then substitute in 1 over lambda, uh, 1 over lambda squared. If we have the 1 over 2m h uh, squared here, we just simply put in n over 2l here and square it. And we get n squared, h squared. 4L squared times 2M gives you 8ML squared in the denominator. And what we have here is a quantization of energy. We simply have quantized the wavelength, which in turn quantizes the momentum, which in turn quantizes the energy. This is the exact result you get from quantum mechanics when you solve a particle in a box, the one-dimensional Schrodinger equation. Amazing. All from classical physics with a little help from the Broly. So here is the alternative form where you replace h with 2 pi h bar, since h bar is h over 2 pi. And when you do that, you get 4 pi squared h bar squared, and you get in the denominator then a 2, and you have n squared pi squared h bar squared over 2 m l squared. What do we have for the wave? We have sine waves that are oscillating, so we hit it with cosine omega t. So all of these here are sine waves, and cosine omega t, that condition there with t being zero, you get cosine, the zero is one, so it would be here like pulling this up, and there's your sign, let it go, and it goes back and forth, and here's the sign of uh, the kx, the, the second case, where at t equals zero, that's what you would see that at that instant, and then as time goes on, it starts to oscillate. So we are interested in looking at this solution, but you know there's another way of looking at this. If you have a wave with the same frequency going left and right, bouncing back and forth, you can write this as a wave traveling to the right, at, you know, with kx minus omega t, and one going to the left. Here I put amplitude over 2 in each case because then I'll get a nice result when I combine them. When I use trigonometric substitutions, we derived this early in our course, the uh, difference of the angles here and the sum of the angles. And if we apply this trigonometric identity, uh, two trigonometric identities to this, what do we get? Well, let's see. We have here the alpha is equal to kx and the beta is equal to here, the beta is equal to omega t. So kx, kx for the alpha and beta is the omega t. See, here you have a minus sign and here you're going to have a plus sign. So if we look at that and do the substitution, uh, the formula here says for the difference at the angles, you have the sine of alpha, which is the sine kx here, that we're going to put in the formula down here, sine of kx and you have the cosine of beta, which is the cosine of omega t, and then there is a minus sign, and then you have the sine of beta, which is 
omega t, sine of omega t, and you have the cosine of alpha, which is then the cosine of kx. Then when you apply this to the second uh, equation, uh, or the second term here, using the second equation here, you see that you get the same thing with just a plus sign. So that means this uh, piece over here can be uh, written as the same thing we had before, but just putting a plus sign in there. So doing that, we get the same thing here with the plus sign, and then when you add the two, you see that that second piece in each case, you get cancellation, and you get what we wrote down at, at the beginning here. We, we knew this was going to be a solution, something like this, so we, we see it here two ways. That's called a standing wave, by the way. When a wave travels to the left, one travels to the right, they interfere and reinforce each other in some nice pattern for these discrete cases, and you get the standing wave pattern. Well, uh, what we're going to do in our next section is find a differential equation for this solution with the condition that we get this uh, energy uh, spectrum and that will take us to the Schrodinger equation.